Hi guys. Uh, so in today's video, um, I would like uh, I actually give a try to uh, GPT-4. So ChatGPT in, in this case is the GPT-4 model. And my goal was to see if um, GPT-4 was able to find vulnerabilities that I already find, uh, found uh, during audits or especially during fuzzing. So um, kind of the, the response to uh, some, uh, some people who, with who I discussed that was telling me, oh, you're going to run out of jobs because, I mean, what's the point of doing fuzzing and finding vulnerability if actually ChatGPT can do it for you? So to answer the question, uh, I uh, give it some snippet of codes and I ask him basically to find vulnerability uh, on it. So for that, uh, I uh, basically took a look at, um, took some of the, the trophies uh, that we found during fuzzing and during some mission and, and so on. So a bunch of them regarding like uh, blockchain uh, software audit, like Ethereum 2.0 and, and so on. So um, that's basically what we're going to take a look at. Um, I think we have like two or three examples, three examples. So first, I'll start with something really basic, just to see uh, kind of this level of uh, understanding. I don't know if we can say that, but um, so basically, I took this uh, snippet of code, uh, only this specific function. It's a really simple um, function written in Python. And the main goal of this stuff is um, a really basic example for fuzzing where uh, as you can see if you give um, in data the fuzzing labs strings you will trigger a runtime error and in that case we are using the uh, ateris python fuzzer but I mean, that's just uh, ju just an example so i basically provide this one uh, this uh, sequence and uh, that's what i've done first of all really important i give him some context on what he what he, he is or what I want him to be, uh, what will be his mission, and uh, how I will interact with him. So that's why I, I precise, okay, you are an expert in cybersecurity and specifically in vulnerability research, um, and your job is to find bugs in software and explain how to exploit this bug, so explain the vulnerability and so on. You can even ask him a bit more detail and so on, you, you will see. Uh, I'm your assistant, so I will provide him the source code, I don't know if this um, snippet of code contains bugs or not. So I prefer to tell him that, even if, to be honest, it's false. I know if there is bugs or not. Uh, but I want him to be the more uh, neutral as possible and not uh, biased uh, his uh, thoughts on that. So are you ready? He told me he is. So, so I'm giving him, uh, I'm telling him it's Python code, but I, I'm pretty sure he's able to find it by himself. Uh, so I'm giving him the snippet of code and um, the that's really interesting. So first he will uh, basically describe what he is looking at. So it's a function um, with specific sequence of characters. So he understands that it's characters. Uh, he will raise a runtime error if uh, with this message. No obvious security vulnerability, but depending on the use case, uh, there could be some of them. Um, in case of that, uh, it's Python code. Um, so typically, what you will have if you trigger this runtime error and you are putting that maybe, and that's why he mentioned the use case, so that's really clever. Um, if you are running that um, as a common line uh, program, it doesn't matter if you are running, uh, if you are getting a runtime error. But if you are running that into a server, a runtime error like this one will actually uh, lead to a denial of service attack. So that's really nice because he actually uh, understand this um, um, cases where one um, in one case it's not a vulnerability and on, on the other one it could be a, a vulnerability. So really interesting. And then he also uh, specified that uh, if the data is coming from untrusted uh, sources, uh, it's nice to validate the input and, and so on. He didn't mention anything regarding the verification of the land. Um, that could be uh, something uh, nice. But I mean, I, actually, I didn't uh, ask him to uh, give me the, the good practice of this piece of code. Either. Just just that. The second one I chose, um, so I took this one from uh, those findings, it was a prism, so um, 
two years ago, I was doing fuzzing for um, the Ethereum Foundation um, via my friend from Sigma Prime. And uh, during that, I was um, writing a dedicated fuzzer uh, for um, blockchain protocols, and in that case, the Ethereum consensus clients. And uh, when doing that, I was doing fuzzing on Prism, that is, uh, I think, the, the most used um, consensus client on, on Ethereum. And I found this bug. So I found this one during fuzzing. It was a bug uh, in what we call SSZ, that is like a compression format that is used uh, for the consensus client. So I report the bug and, and so on. And um, basically, I, I want to see if uh, actually ChatGPT is able to find this bug as well. So I took the, the fix uh, just to give you an idea. The, the bug I reported was fixed like that. Uh, it was the fact that um, there was um, getting some offset indexes um, and I mean some next offset from the data I was providing, from the byte I was providing, and no uh, verification of the maximum uh, value of this uh, data uh, that can lead to actually a slice uh, out of bound uh, vulnerability. So they fix it like that. Perfect. So let's take a look at this uh, function. So it's the function unmarshal that was used, and uh, it's not a really big one, but there is actually some stuff to, to it, okay? I'm only providing this function, ideally, uh, and ChatGPT is able to handle even more uh, file. Ideally, it could be really nice to give him like everything for him to get the full context uh, of it. Uh, I did not even provide any context, so that's also um, um, a bad point on my side, because if I'm telling him he would unmarshal untrusted data, uh, and this data um, is basically um, giving some context about its data coming from the network, uh, we are dealing with a blockchain, so everything uh, um, that can crash or lead to logic bugs could be really critical, maybe he will find actually some, some other stuff. So I'm providing him this uh, stuff. Um, and uh, what uh, he tell me, told me was basically that. So I'm giving him this piece of code. It's the function I mentioned. And what you can see is he actually made a quick uh, analysis of that. So method on Marshall for a struct, uh, struct SSZ. Uh, what is really interesting is uh, text some value and reflex type and so on. Um, responsible for unmarshalling as simple serialized. So I did not mention anything about the fact that this was uh, Ethereum related, but he actually find it. So really, really good. Um, SSZ uh, using Ethereum protocol, in particular Ethereum 2.0. So he was able to find by himself the context uh, of what I provided. The reflect package, uh, dynamically inspect provided value, so could be risky depending on the data uh, that can come and so on. That's totally true. It's something really interesting and not something really um, easy to find usually when you are auditing a Go uh, project, Go source code. So that's really good. What is more interesting for me is the second one. Method doesn't check the bond of the input slice explicitly. Uh, and as you can see, he's providing me an example of set index counter, byte per length of set, and so on. What is funny is that this one is actually not the bug I found. So that's even more interesting, and you, you will see why right after. Uh, it's essential to validate the truth, uh, the, the truly, uh, and so on. Um, really good. And then again, um, no error handling related to reflect value, reflect type, and so on. So that's that's bad and that can panic. Again, um, another, uh, so I think in that case, I don't remember if it's applicable uh, right there, but uh, because I think it's trusted data uh, that is provided, but w whatever. What is really interesting is this one. So it's actually found that there is uh, a potential um, out of bound, uh, and even more, just not a potential, but it is pretty, especially say that um, there is one, 
but it doesn't provide the same uh, stuff than mine. So in this session, I, I didn't ask him to go deeper. On another one, it's actually what I've done when uh, doing some preparation for this uh, for this video. So let me just uh, show you. So I I ask him, okay, please. Uh, give me where in the code, so he actually provide me where it was, and I also ask him, do we have some similar pattern in the code for that? And he actually tell me, yes, there is like three of them. So one of them was this one, input, uh, offset, input, counter, uh, and so on. Um, so right there. Uh, then this one, input, next, index, and so on. So not even the one I mentioned as well. And finally, the one I reported, uh, that was uh, this one, the next. So that's really, really good. Uh, because, I mean, I was finding that during fuzzing. I was not doing code audit uh, almost at all on the code base because it was just too much. And my goal was really to find the stuff automatically with fuzzing. So uh, when I report the bug, actually, I didn't took the time myself to um, take a look at the rest of the code and see if some similar pattern uh, was there, because I was expected the further to potentially find it. Uh, so that's really interesting. And even more interesting is that, um, as you can see, it was fixed right there. Uh, if I'm going back, uh, I should see uh, the issue. And inside this issue, what you can see is that later, so the bug was fixed, and as I actually removed the, the package related to that, so whatever. But interestingly, the issue was reopened um, sometime, uh, like two or three months after, and um, uh, Farhad um, was actually uh, so Victor, sorry, Victor was actually finding that inside the same file, there is a, a, a second version of the bug, like a, a variant of the bug. And it's actually what he mentioned regarding this specific line and this specific line, this speci specific snippet. Um, so this one was the one that was fixed. And the one that was not fixed is actually the one right there, the next index, which is you might guess, uh, one of the bugs uh, actually found by uh, GPT-4. So really interesting. Regarding the first one that he actually mentioned, uh, I actually don't even know if this one was a fix or if it's not. Uh, I actually uh, didn't take a look at that for quite some time and it's, uh, it's archived as you can see because it's not used anymore but potentially there is still one vulnerability uh, on this package. So if you are using this package, please uh, take care uh, of that. So really, uh, really nice, uh, really amazing. Finally, uh, again, I took another piece of code uh, where I found a vulnerability, and in that case, it was in Rust, especially uh, it's one bug I found on Lighthouse, one of the other um, consensus client and especially in one library that is called ENR, okay, for uh, Ethereum name uh, record. And uh, you can see the fix right there. Uh, so basically, so it's a bit particular for this one, uh, because if you take a look at the code like that, you, you might think, okay, that's good. Um, there is like length verification and verification of some kind of header and then decode string and so on. Everything looks safe. Uh, but the fact is, it's a really particular bug. Uh, it's due to uh, the fact that when you are doing slicing on a string like that, on uh, let's say pure byte, um, you are not taking in consideration the fact that uh, you can have a Unicode um, character and Unicode character will be encoded in two bytes. So if you are trying to slice in the middle of a Unicode character, you trigger uh, an issue, you trigger a, a crash. Um, uh, and that's something really particular and not known that much. That's something I'm also discussing in my training regarding Rust, but it's not something we, we see that often or at least that is verified that, that much. So I took this uh, implementation, this snippet of code, and I give it to, um, to ChatGPT. 
and I ask him what he think about that. So uh, again, really mind blowing. Uh, he actually know uh, what is a trait, um, like there is a generic parameter. So uh, even if you are starting with a language like Rust, that could be uh, complicated uh, when you are starting with it. Clearly, you should ask, you should have uh, GPT, uh, chat GPT with you uh, on the side and maybe ask him, okay, what exactly is this? What is this, um, this pattern? Can you give me like a, maybe a, an equivalent in, in pseudocode that's possible? Really interesting. So he takes a URL self based CC4. So he specifies that it's uh, ENR, et a non record. I did not mention anything about that. So he find it by himself. Input string start with this prefix, remove it, take the base 64 string and do the decode config and so on. So it seems to be good. Potential security concern, check that um, it's less than four and return error. This is good. Prevent function from panicking uh, when slicing the string. So again, he um, is totally agree with the actual implementation, the vulnerability implementation, because it seems to be good. I mean, there is length verification and um, and seems nice. The function use base64 decode on uh, config, uh, decode base64 string should under an invalid base64, uh, and we return an error. So it should be good. And it tell us, okay, it seems secure and handle potential error case correctly. So that's exactly what it does if you are only taking a look at the code. Uh, but if you are aware of the implementation of basically slicing in Rust, you will know that um, this uh, bug uh, will actually uh, trigger um, uh, a vulnerability. Give me one sec. I will maybe just show you the, the slide uh, of my training in Rust regarding that. Could be interesting for you to to learn more about this specific vulnerability that is really uh, interesting um unicode error mm, i think i could just do that Bye. okay my bad sorry taking a bit of time so yeah just um, take a look at that. It's going to be uh, most simple. So as you can see, UTF-8 string handling. So this specific uh, encoded string type. So uh, a way that you can uh, actually trigger that is uh, actually if you have, um, for example, in that case, we are taking, uh, I think it's a Cyrillic character and they are encoded in multiple bytes. So basically what you will have is um, if you are trying to slice between them, you will trigger this uh, vulnerability. So that's uh, that's the idea. So as you saw, it's really impressive and mind blowing. Uh, that's really good. Um, I'm, I'm, I still have. Uh, uh, I mean, ChatGPT will not take my job. Uh, I still have some stuff to do, and I think it's it's even more true for potentially other logic bugs that can appear. Um, I will maybe try it on, on smart contracts and especially smart contracts with logic bugs regarding potentially like um, really close to financial logic. Uh, and it could be also really interesting to see if he actually understands uh, some of them, but um, you, you get the idea. So please let me know if actually you give a try and maybe if you are using uh, GPT-4 or ChatGPT in your day-to-day -day job as vulnerability researcher and so on, or even uh, as a developer. And if actually you find bugs uh, that uh, you haven't found or, or the opposite. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, please let me know what you would like to see in the next uh, video. Thank you.